Hello, this is Damien Muir from Burmad Water Technologies, and today I'm going to show how to configure, wire, and simulate the outputs on the Euromag MC406 converter. Now, you can do all this via the software, so today we're going to show how you can do this via the push buttons. If you're outside and you don't have the software or communication cable, you can do all of that through the front push buttons. Now, this particular converter that we're going to demonstrate on today is a battery powered unit. Uh, though you can also power it via 12 to 24 volts um, and when you do so the red LED will come on to show it's in active mode um, and that means the communications is always available and it's always accessible but for the battery one to conserve power it does go into a battery mode so what we're going to do is push one of the buttons once and that will bring on the red LED and put it into an active mode now to access the parameters we press the far left button and it will come up with an access and here we need to enter the password now you can use the up and down arrows to change the digits and the page button will progress to go to the next digit if there is no password in the converter that's been set you can simply go all the way through to the end and press it one more time to access the parameters however on this particular unit we do have a password in there now if you go through all the zeros and it's not allowing you to access it there is a password that's been put into the converter and you would need to talk to your supplier to find out what that password has been set to but for this particular one we have just put in all nines just to put, make it nice and simple so you can press the up and down arrows but once you go down past zero it will go to the highest digit nine so it's a sort of shortcut way of Going to there, now we press that progress button one more time. And there we are, we're into our function codes. So if you go to our website, bermad.com.au, uh, you can go to our product page, go to our MagFlow section, go to the MC406 converter, and you'll be able to download the user manual. And in the user manual, you'll see all the various function codes that can be changed through the converter push buttons. So what we're going to just show firstly is before we go to the outputs, we can show how we can change the display. We can show the, how we change the engineering units or the flow rate and the totalizer. And we'll also show how we can change the decimal points on that as well. Uh, just in case you're wondering, the alarm there that's flashing up is because obviously we don't have any water in the pipe. So you can press the page button in the home section and I'll show you what errors are available there so we just go back and we'll enter into that function code so just to go back to the first few function codes the first one there is your flow rate unit I mean your flow rate time base so currently this is set to liters a second so we're going to change that to megaliters a day say so that's what you want to see and your totalizer up the top there is in kilolitres. we'll change that to megaliters as well so we'll change that flow rate unit to megaliters time based to days and the county units your totalizer to megaliters so we'll just do that now so once you go into your functions you simply press the progress or the second the page button there to enter into your parameter you can scroll through the various different settings you can change that to and you can see the top line there changing as we're pressing until we get our desired unit there megaliters now to accept that you must press the page button to accept it if you ever go into a parameter and you didn't mean to go to just exit out by pressing the, this button and it'll bring you back to the home page and it won't accept that change so you can go in there you see it hasn't reverted back to what it was it hasn't accepted that change so we'll go back and we'll change that to megaliters we'll press that to accept there we go so now you can see that's changed to megaliters so we'll just go back into here, go to the second function, which is our time base for our flow rate. And there we can change it to day. There we go, megaliters per day. Now the third one was our totalizer. So we'll change that to megaliters. There we go, megaliters. Enter, done. So you can customize it to whatever you like. Megaliters for your totalizer, megaliters per day is what we've got there. And again, we can customize 
the number of digits you might want to see. So here we're seeing a flow rate with two decimal points. Maybe you just want to see one decimal point and your totalizer, you might want to see three decimal points is what we'll change it to. In that case, being megaliters, we'll see down to a kiloliter being the least significant figure. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we'll go press that far left button. That'll bring us back into the function codes. And if we bring back our manual here again, we'll scroll along, just readjust that. And you can see here 16 is our decimal points for our flow rate. And 17 is the number of decimal points for our totalizer. So let's go the up arrow till we get to 16. We'll enter that in. So this is our flow rate. We'll just make that one. Enter. And now we'll go up into 17 for our totalizer, which we wanted to make three decimal points. There we go, accept. We'll go back. We can see those changes that have taken place. We've got three decimal points now on our totalizer and one decimal point for our flow rate. So next we're gonna set up the pulse output. And so if we go back to our manual here, we can see what parameters are used to set the pulse output. So the pulse is generated after the pre-programmed number of amount of volume that's been sent through the meter has been achieved and it'll send the pulse out to a telemetry device or control device. So here we have a, uh, use your pulse volume is, is seven. Eight is what your unit is. So whether, you know, we weigh 1,000 kiloliters or we do 10 liters, you know, we, we need to know what the engineering units are and how long that pulse is then generated for. Uh, the amount of time and it's expressed in milliseconds. So firstly, I think it's probably important to go to function number eight, because you want to know what you're, what you're setting it for. Are you setting it in kiloliters, you're setting it in liters, or what are you setting it in? So that was function eight. So what we'll do is we'll press that far left button there. And this time we'll go to function number eight. We press our enter button there. And we can see it's set to two, which is liters. So that two it denotes here, one is milliliters, two is liters, three is kiloliters, four is gallons. So we'll leave that as liters and we'll go and see what uh, the current, they are currently set up for in our pulse volume. So we'll, we'll accept that. Okay, so two, yes. And we'll go down to seven. So it's set to currently a thousand liters. Now, say we want to, being a small meter here, a little 50 mil, we want to maybe bring it down to a hundred liters per pulse. So what we do is we can press that along and obviously it's going to take a long time to bring that down. So you can press and hold that down arrow and it will start to speed up. You keep holding that down and obviously increase, keeps increasing that speed faster and faster. It is easy to overshoot. This happens quite a bit when you're going that fast, but don't worry. You can just go back up and change that to whatever you want. Going too fast, let's let go. Press back down again. There we go. Up to 100. So we're on 100 now. So we've got 100 liters. We'll press the second button to accept that. So we've got 100 liters. Now we'll come up to function number nine. So function nine, as we mentioned before, is your pulse duration. So every 100 liters, the pulse will come on and it will come on for 200 milliseconds. So that's what we typically send it out as default, but um, you can make that longer or as short as you like, you can bring that down to, it doesn't have to be a round figure, you can make it whatever you want. Uh, but say say you really, <laughs> say you really wanna make it longer, so you can make it longer than 200 milliseconds if you want. Now, how, however, if you're pulsing at a very high or very low volume and you make the pulse too long, it will not have enough time before the next pulse is generated. In which case it, it will detect that and it will give you a pulse overlap alarm saying that the next pulse is coming on before the first one hasn't finished. But uh, anyway, just to show that you can adjust that to whatever you want, you just press the enter button to accept that. So that's how we set our pulse output. Okay, so we've shown how you set up the pulse output. Now, the, actually the unit has two pulse outputs. So one is fixed for the forward flow, um, and, but you do have a second pulse output that's configurable. 
So, and that's on function number 37. So we can see here 37 is uh, set to as default out of the factory as negative pulse output. Okay, so that means that it's set for your reverse flow. So you have a flow going in your forward direction, and you, and you also detects flow in a reverse direction being a bi-directional meter. So if we go to 37, we can have a look at what that's set for. And if you only want one pulse output, you don't need to worry about this, of course, but um, you do have it there, uh, which can come in handy, and I'll explain one a typical application come across quite a bit. So here we're set to zero, so negative flow, but you may never expect to have negative flow. You don't care about monitoring it or having any pulses. But you might, for instance, have a, a telemetry device connected to your meter. I mean, you also want to have a pulse output for your uh, controller or data logger and another piece of equipment. You need to have two pulse outputs. If you only have one pulse output from a, your flow meter, you cannot use it through to two different pieces of equipment. You need a pulse splitter, it starts becoming complicated. So uh, this is galvanically isolated to pulse output. So we can then set this also for the positive flow. Therefore, we can have it to going to two different pieces of equipment, two separate isolated electrical pulse outputs. So in this instance, we'll set it to one, so it's on, on the positive pulse. Your other option is to set it to um, to your negative, oh, sorry, net. We have a net, which is obviously your forward minus your reverse. Um, and then the third one is an error. And so if any fault comes up, it will give you a pulse output, which could be good for um, alarming you that there's something wrong with the meter. But this time we'll just set it for a pulse output. So both our positive and, um, both our pulse outputs are set for the forward flow. Now in the manual here, if we just go down to page 27 briefly, we can see the outputs here. So these are your pulse outputs. I'll just span into that. And then we can see there that we have like a positive negative. So that's basically your forward and reverse flow. But again, that second pulse output is configurable. So your first one here is fixed for your forward flow. And that's what you would wire to if you were just using the one pulse output or you, know, you just want to wire straight in to see how much flow has gone through in the forward direction. Let's move that across a bit. So, there we go. And so the, the other one here is your negative flow. And you can see they're normally open and common. So there's actually a um, auto-detecting pulse output. It can be for voltage-free contact or it an open collector output. Um, so it can be either, and each one's independent from each other, like I mentioned. So this one could be for a voltage-free contact. This could be for an open collector to a PLC, whatever you like. Um, and then you can see it, your logic there, and that's that's where you wire it in. So we just go back to our different function codes here. So that's your pulse output, and like I mentioned, uh, the, your two uh, pulse outputs and how they can be independently configured. So next we're gonna show how to configure the four to 20 milliamp settings. So that's done through functions number 38, 39, and 40. The 38's a very important one. I would go check that first. Before you go changing your four to 20 milliamp values, make sure that you've got the four to, four to 20 milliamps actually assigned to your, the correct value. Um, it's showing in the manual here zero to four, but it's actually been updated recently to zero to five. So. Um, five is actually disabled. So if you go into function 38 and it's showing five, uh, that means it's disabled and it's never gonna work. So what we wanna do is we wanna assign it to the flow rate. So we're gonna assign it to zero. So we'll go through, you can see here, this particular unit doesn't have the pressure sensor attached, but you can have the pressure. And here we go, flow rate. So we'll press the second button to accept that. Now we can go to 39 and 40 to change our forward and 20 milliamp settings. So here we go. There's your four milliamps with zero, which typically you would just leave it at zero, but for some instance you want an elevated or de-elevated uh, four milliamps, you can do that. We'll just accept that as your 20 milliamps. We'll go into function 40 for your 20 milliamps. And here we go, 1.69. So basically by default, it's set to 10 meters per second is what the default 20 milliamp setting is. Now that's quite a large figure. Um, you wouldn't realistically do 10 meters a second 
of flow through through a flow meter. The demand flow is capable of that. It's capable of extremely high flows. However, if you're only going to do zero to three meters a second, um, you're really going to lose a lot of your resolution. You're only going to be using, um, you know, I can't work out the mass off the top, top of my head, but uh, four, say four to seven milliamps rather than four to 20. So you really want to use up uh, the complete four to 20 or close to it. So think of what your realistically is the highest flow you're going to put through it and then round it up to, to get air on the side of safety. And therefore you're getting closer to your high resolution. So what we can do is we can decrease this down. Again, you hold your finger on. It does, be mindful, it does get away from you a bit if, quite quickly. So it just uh, it takes a bit of uh, practice, but uh, you go up and down, keep your finger on the button and you can increase this to whatever you like. So we'll, we'll call it 0.6 just for the sake of this exercise. So we'll go up 0.6 megalitres per day. All right, press the second button to accept that and we're done. All right, so now we've set our 4 to 20, we've assigned it to the flow rate, we've put our 4 and 20 milliamp settings in and we'll just go back to page number 27 and we'll just show the wiring configuration on the 4 to 20 unit. Now be mindful that the, the four, MC406 has a passive 4 to 20 milliamp output, meaning that it needs an external power source to power the 4 to 20 milliamp loop. So if you are gonna use a, um, you can use the same power source as a, as a supply if you wish, if you're powering it externally. Um, but this is a, shows you an example of how you would typically wire it. Um, you would have your positive terminal here, I'll just zoom in there, so your positive terminal, terminal number 11, so that would be wired to your positive in this demonstrate. This illustration here shows terminal 11 being wired to the positive of your power supply. Um, this milli, uh, milliamp uh, meter here would be your controller, variable speed drive, whatever you like. Um, you would have your common of your power supply married up to your common of your 420 milliamp uh, input. And then your positive of your four to 20 milliamp input going into your negative of your four to 20 input on your MC406 completing the loop. So that's how you would wire it typically on the four to 20 milliamp passive loop that the MC406 has. Okay, so that's our four to 20 milliamps all set up there. So we've set our four to 20 milliamp outputs and our pulse outputs. So say we have this connected to our equipment, which we're sending those signals to. We want to actually check that it's wired correctly, it's working, that we've got the scaling correct, um, and it's reflecting on our external piece of equipment as it is on our flow meter. So the obvious way is you install it, you put flow through it, but that's not always practical at the time of commissioning. So this can be done even on the bench, but once it's installed and you don't have flow going through it, we can simulate it just to make sure everything is scaled correctly. And those are done through parameters number 42 and 43. So 42 is your flow simulation. That's to enable and disable your flow simulation. And 43 is the value that you want to put in. Now that's based on the engineering units that we set, in which case we set it to megalitres per day. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to firstly go into, before we enable it, we'll set it to the value we want. So we're going to go to 43 and we'll set that. So given that we've um, set our 20 milliamps to 0.6, why not make it 0.6? We'll make it 0.6 and that way we can test that this is giving you 20 milliamps output. So what we're gonna do there is adjust it down. Now I've gone way too far. Let's bring that back up. And like I said, it's easy to overshoot. So just let, let go of it if you think it's going a bit too fast. And bring that down to 0 0.6. And once we have the Xi value, now this is simulating the four milliamps as well as our pulse. So before we set the pulses to 100 liters, or would have been us doing the same engineering units, but we've done 100 liters. Uh, so um, 0.6 megalitres a day is roughly seven litres per second. So 
by my calculation, about every 14 seconds, it will give a pulse output. It will, it will simulate uh, 100 litres and it will give you a, um, a pulse as well. So we'll accept that. So that's our flow simulation. That's what we're set to, 0 0.6. Now we're going to go to 42 and we're going to press 1 to enable that. Okay, we'll go to 1. And now we've enabled it. And when we go back there to our home page, we can see the simulation is on and we're showing 0.6 litres per megalitres per day I should say so if we can go through our piece of equipment we can make sure that we're getting that pulses on those increments uh, every 100 litres that gets simulated we're getting the pulse and of course we're getting now 20 milliamps and of course you can adjust this to any value you want you can go down to your 12 milliamps, 12 milliamps bring it down to 0.3 and, and test that as well but um, here we go and the timeout it has a three minute timeout so if you haven't entered the password in after three minutes it'll ask you to re-enter so we'll go back into 40 42 and we'll disable that flow simulation so we can see it's disabled there okay so lastly uh, we've set all the parameters up we've set the display the way we want it we set all our outputs the, the, the right way um, just to safeguard from anyone going in and changing parameters after that uh, what we can do is we can save all these configurations to memory and the way we do that is we'll go back to our function codes here again and we're going to go to function 30 save user parameters okay I definitely recommend this uh, if you're doing if especially if you don't have a password protected um, you just want to make sure that uh, if anyone does get in there and change anything you can bring it back and you don't have to go through all the parameters to make sure that it's set up correctly simply go into 30 enter so you have save user now if we go back to our manual here you'll see on the function four or sorry so button four you press long press and that will save it so button four your far right press and hold and keep holding until it's accepted there we go and now it's been saved to memory so if anyone was anyone wants to go change any settings all you need to do is go back to function 39 press and long press the uh, far right button and hold it down and it'll load back those parameter settings so there you go we've changed all the uh, settings on our display our pulse our 4 to 20 and we've saved it all we've simulated to make sure they're all working and that just gives you an overview of the main functions of the outputs on the mc406 and if you need any support please don't hesitate to contact us at Burmad Wallet Technologies and thanks very much for watching.